Everyone, today we have some pretty harsh words from the first chapter of Isaiah. Hear the word of Yahweh, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says Yahweh. I've had enough of burnt offerings of rams, the fat of fed beasts. I don't delight in the blood of bulls or lambs or goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is pointless. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals, my whole being hates. They become a burden to me. I'm weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove your evil deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. So this is a reminder that we're in the season of Lent, which is a time where we focus on repentance. Not just to feel bad, but to realize the ways that we need to find a new perspective. And so prophets like Isaiah can be pretty harsh about our current view of things, the way that we live, the way that we treat other people, or here specifically on the kind of religion that God is actually looking for. You know, he, he speaks in this way because it's a wake-up call for when we think that we're making God happy by just going through certain religious mo- motions, doing things that functionally can be kind of meaningless while refusing to make real changes for those who are most in need. For example, sending thoughts and prayers when there's another mass shooting while also refusing any attempts to make things safer. Claiming to protect kids while denying them free lunches or overlooking the authority figures who are actually most likely to abuse them. Saying that you're pro-life while supporting the death penalty and war and any form of redemptive violence done by good guys. Now, some will respond that these sorts of things are, that's not what following God is really about. Those are political concerns, not spiritual. Well, that's the exact attitude that Isaiah is calling out. No, it's not about any political party. Neither can establish the kingdom of God or do all of the true work of justice that we're called to here. But politics really is about how we love our neighbor on a bigger scale. And if you don't think that's part of what God cares about, the main thing God cares about, that sounds like you need to listen to this wake-up call too. Maybe letting the idea of godly justice become politicized is something else that we need to repent of. So, Isaiah says that our hands are full of blood. We're all complicit in some way. So how can we look at this impact that we are having on the world? How can that be a part of the way that we come before our God? Let's come to him with justice for those who need it most.